Hi, I'm Noel with creationeffects.com and in this video I'm going to be showing you a couple different time warping effects that were made entirely in Adobe After Effects. The first one I called a free scan and you might have seen this as a popular filter on some phone apps. It will scan your footage in any direction and speed, freezing the pixels as it scans. The second one I called the time warper and it's good for making weird, stretchy, or rubbery people. Both effects are customizable, so you can create a lot of unique looks. And these effects are just two of 100 effects included in the Creation Trippy Effects Package, which is an After Effects template that you can check out using the link in the description. It's got lots of trippy effects for your footage, as well as a bunch of trippy, mesmerizing animations, all of which you can customize using simple controls. So let's take a look at the freeze scan effect. So I have Creation Trippy Effects open and uh, you can find the free scan effect in this folder, effects for footage. And here it is. Um, got a main comp in here and uh, in the pre-comps folder, there are several different pre-comps. Um, this one, your footage is where you would place your footage. Um, since we're gonna be looking at a couple different effects, I'm actually gonna put my footage into this main your footage comp up here. And that would let me preview any of the effects in the template with my footage. So I'll open that up and I've already got some footage here that I imported and I'll just drag that into there. Uh, you can see I've got several shots here. Uh, you want something with motion in it. We'll go with the uh, break dancer. I'll close that and I'll open up my free scan comp. And let's just play it back and see what we got. So you can see there's like an invisible line that goes across and it freezes the pixels as it passes over them. And if you play it long enough, uh, you'll see that it actually unfreezes and resumes normal playback. Um, that's a feature you can turn off if you want. But let's take a look at uh, this comp. At the top, we've got some instructions here. You'll want to read through those. And the second layer is this control layer. If you select that and then look in your Effect Controls panel, and if you don't see this panel, just go to Window and choose Effect Controls. Um, this is how you can customize the effect using these controls here. So let's take a look at this first control, Quality Resolution. I've lowered it to 30% because uh, it makes it a lot faster to work with. I recommend that you lower it while you're customizing it and previewing, and then when you're ready to render, you can turn it back up. The thing to remember is that the higher this number is, the effect gets exponentially slower. So there's a big difference between 80% and 90% when it comes to render speeds. And really, this you should never put this higher than 95%. I think it, it just will take too long to render. Probably a good number for, for rendering would be 85 or somewhere around there. And also, the timeline gets exponentially slower the farther down you are. So, so when you send your render to Adobe Media Encoder, it might start going fairly fast, but by the time you reach the end, it's gonna take a lot longer for each frame to render. Anyway, when you lower the resolution, you can see what that does to the effect. We can see all these different steps or lines. So this gets a lot smoother when you increase the quality, but also in addition to these smaller steps or these jagged lines, We've got some larger jagged edges here. I don't know if you can see that, but it goes like that. If you see that in your footage, that's because there's a, a mismatch in the frame rate. So if I go back to my project panel, you can see that this, this comp is 29.97 frames per second. And if your footage is something else, then it's gonna show up as these jagged edges. So we can see that our footage is 25 frames per second. So we need to change all of our comps, our main comp and all the pre-comps to match our footage. Uh, we'll start with this one up here. Just open it and then you can change the frame rate in the composition settings panel. So that's under composition, composition settings, or you can do control K or command K on a Mac. And we'll just change it to 25. And then I'll do that for the rest of these as well. So 
So let's keep looking at these controls. Um, we've got a start position and an end position for the scan. So if we select this pseudo effect here, we can see where those positions are. We've got these little crosshairs here that you can click and drag, or you can enter in the values up here. You can make the scan go in either direction or from top to bottom or vice versa or diagonally if you want. Uh, the next one we got is the scan start time. So it's set to zero, which means that the scan starts at frame zero. If we, uh, I'm going to change the footage so I can show you something. In this clip, we've got some cool motion. And I know because I've tested this before, if we delay the scan a little bit, then we can sync it up with this fire, which is moving across the screen. Ideally, you want the scan to follow something that's moving in that same direction. And if we go back here and play it back, you can see it's it's working on the smoke, but it's not catching up with the fire. If we just delay it by half a second, we'll do 0 0.5, and then let's play that back. We've got that cool streak of fire. You can also set the duration of the scan so it lasts four seconds to go from here to here. You can set that to whatever you want. Uh, the continue scan feature, I told you about that earlier. If you uncheck it, then it won't do that second scan and start playing again. But instead, actually what happens is just some weird warping. All right, preview displacement map. If we turn that on, we'll see a gradient that moves across the frame. So without going into too much detail, this effect uses the time displacement effect in After Effects. That effect can displace pixels by time, and it uses a, a grayscale gradient or map like this to determine how to displace those pixels. So whenever there's a solid 50% gray color, like we see here, pixels aren't displaced at all. They just play back normally. If you have a darker than gray color, then those pixels will be playing from an earlier time in your footage. So those pixels will be playing on a delay. And wherever there's a lighter than gray color, those pixels will be playing from a later time in your footage. And next we have this adjust gradient angle control. If you turn that up a little bit, it changes the angle of the gradient, which ends up slowing down your footage after the scan. So instead of freezing the footage completely, it continues to play which creates kind of a cool effect. Okay, let's take a quick look at the time warper effect. It's down here, we'll open that up. So this one is good at making people look, um, I don't know, rubbery. Let's change the footage. Um, I think it's best to use footage where the subject is moving, but the background is motionless or relatively static. I like this clip because the background doesn't move at all. Let's use that. Uh, the comp is, is built the same way. We've got a control layer. Um, the quality resolution control is a little different on this. You actually have to keep this lower. I would keep it at around 20% for previews and then keep it under 60% for your final render. You can see we've got some different controls here. If we look at the displacement map and play it back, we've got this uh, fractal noise texture and it's slowly moving. I don't know if you can see that but you can change uh, the width and height of this. You can increase or decrease the contrast to adjust the strength of the effect. And you can try different noise types too. I haven't really played with this much, so I, I have a feeling you can make a lot of really cool, interesting looks. I just haven't explored it much. And uh, this first control, warp amount, so this is the maximum amount of time that pixels can be displaced by. So right now it's set to half a second which is probably a bit too much. So I can decrease that or just decrease the contrast maybe and maybe increase the scale of that texture. And let's see what that looks like. That's a lot more subtle. One thing I discovered that's kind of cool is if you turn down the quality resolution something really low, it creates kind of an interesting look. I could see that being used in a music video or something. Anyway, there's a lot of possibilities by playing with the, uh, the texture. Um, that's about it. The only thing I didn't talk about are these pre-comps. 
I guess I can explain something real quick. So I told you that this effect is made with a time displacement effect, and which is great, except uh, when footage gets slowed down with that effect, you, you see these steps or jagged edges, and it ends up looking more like this normally when you use the effect um, because it just doesn't have enough frames to work with in your footage to make it smooth when it's slowed down. Uh, so this effect kind of fixes that problem. It, it, by using a pre-comp that slows down your footage and it uses um, a time warp effect to slow it down, that actually creates new in-between frames, giving the effect a lot more frames to work with. So when you increase the quality with this control here, what you're actually doing is slowing down your footage even more in this comp here and creating more new frames in between the original frames. And then uh, your footage gets sped back up to normal speed in, your, in this comp here, or the final comp, I can't really remember. So there you have it. That's just a brief look at a couple of the effects in this template. Um, if you like trippy stuff, psychedelic looks for your footage and hypnotic animations, uh, check out this template. You can create all kinds of weird trippy stuff with it. And if you use After Effects a lot, be sure to check out the other stuff at creationeffects.com. There's a very popular series of templates called Flocks, Swarms, and Schools for adding custom birds, insects, or fish to your videos. There's a custom 3D storybook where you can put whatever you want on the pages of the book to tell your own story. There's a, an effect called Infinite Horizon, which lets you create cool perspective-bending landscapes. Uh, micro is one that lets you create realistic microscopic animations. And you can also find a number of nature templates. So there's the Beast series, which lets you create custom animal animations. Uh, Ocean lets you create 3D water. And there's one called Landscaper, which I'll be releasing soon. And that one will let you create really cool 3D landscape animations. There's glitch effects and VHS effects old film effects, and an artifacts template which lets you turn your footage into animated artwork in almost any medium. <laughs>